Just slap on the patch and get that good feeling. A new way to get your nicotine fix without killing yourself. All thanks to a college prof who thought outside the pack. It's the early 1980s in New Mexico. Psychologist Frank Etzcorn, normally a patient man, is about to blow a fuse. He's trying to get his wife, Sherry, to give up her two-pack-a-day habit without much luck. Sherry is addicted to one of the most powerful drugs on the planet, nicotine, and she is hooked. And the woman even told me one night, I was getting a lecture for class, that she was going out to walk the dog, and sort of absent-mindedly, I said, yeah, go right ahead, hunt. And then about 10 minutes later, I realized we'd never ever owned a dog, and she was going outside and smoking. My wife started smoking when she was about 13, uh, and that's very typical for Kentuckians. Uh, she had tried to quit. She was much like Mark Twain. She quit hundreds of times. She found it very easy. And um, she worked at it for a number of years. Smoking is dangerous because the nicotine in tobacco addicts you to a whole bunch of other toxic stuff. The things that go along with smoking a cigarette, such as the tar and the carbon monoxide, those are, those are the things that are really bad. The, uh, the tar, that's the, 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 the greasy brown stuff on the end of a filter, that's probably what causes the cancer. And the carbon monoxide blocks the heart's ability to gather oxygen. Frank hates nicotine for its hold on his wife. So yes, I was concerned with her health. Uh, her family had some cardiac problems and I didn't think smoking was, was the best thing for her. Honey, you really need to do that? Frank, leave me alone. Frank may hate nicotine, but he has found it useful. He's experimenting with liquid nicotine to see if it can turn rats off other bad habits like sugar. In other words, aversion therapy. This lab rat drank some sugary water a while ago. Now its corn will try to turn the rat against the sweet snack for life by dosing it with nicotine, which will make it feel very, very sick. Rats uh, cannot vomit uh, under normal circumstances. They don't have the sphincter control of the stomach. And uh, so therefore they evolved this mechanism to avoid poisons. Uh, that's why they take small bits of novel food that makes them the least bit ill. They avoid it uh, for the rest of their lives. But on this fateful night, Frank is about to have an accident that will take his research in an unexpected new direction. He's just given his own skin a mega dose of nicotine. Now he does something that makes the situation even worse. Sort of wiped it, which actually increased the absorbing surface. Uh, heart rate went up to about 180, and I got really, really sick. Frank is in agony, but his brain starts making some vital connections. Could nicotine dosing through the skin satisfy a smoker's addiction? Would it be enough to make them stop craving the nicotine they inhale through cigarettes? As I was on that floor, uh, some things came together. I had known about the scopolamine patch that's put behind the ear for motion sickness. And uh, I knew that the, uh, there were a lot of problems with people trying to quit. Next step, find a test subject for his idea. Rats don't smoke, but his wife and his brother John sure do. Guys, I need a guinea pig. Absolutely not. Honey, come no. on. Help me out, bro. Is it safe? Hey, give me your arm. Just tell me how that feels. Feels good. Like maybe you just had a cigarette? Yeah. Frank devotes himself to creating the first nicotine patch in the world. The idea is 
Heavy smokers start with 21 milligrams and wean themselves off the drug gradually. So when the person feels right, they, they go down to a, a 14 milligram patch and then the same process down to seven and then hopefully you quit. His timing couldn't be better. By the 1980s, the evidence that smoking kills is overwhelming, so the habit is becoming socially unacceptable. But that doesn't persuade Frank's college to cough up the dough for the process of getting a patent. Until he quotes one of his favorite texts to the college president. It said something to the effect that someday someone is going to figure out how to get nicotine into the human's body without them smoking it, dipping it, or chewing it, and they're going to make a lot of money. And I gave that to the president, and I was funded that afternoon. Frank's patch is patented in 1986. Drug companies buy the technology and put the patch on the market. Frank's world explodes. It was like a bomb going off. I just couldn't believe any of this stuff. Uh, there's a little old psychologist in the middle of New Mexico, and suddenly all this is hit. And uh, it was a dream come true. I, it was the lottery. Even better than the lottery, Sherry is finally able to kick her 30-year habit, thanks to her husband's invention. My wife quit smoking, and I'm so proud of her for doing that. Uh, the patch worked for her, but I think the biggest motivator for my wife was having a, a brand new granddaughter, and she didn't want to see her smoking. An average of 15 million patch prescriptions are sold each year to smokers who want to kick the habit. They don't all succeed, but there's no question. Frank Etzkorn's invention has helped a lot of people live longer and healthier.